Hi everyone. So in today's video, I want to discuss the Iraqi dinar and my opinion of it as an investment opportunity. Now in terms of why you should listen to me or hear out my opinion, you know, I've based a career in foreign exchange uh, you know, on a daily basis, although I'm not a, a professional trader myself, but just for my line of work, I'm looking at all the exchange rates. I pretty much have many of them in my head, but not just that, I'm pretty familiar with where oil is, the stock market, I follow Bitcoin very closely. So I'm quite familiar with currencies. Uh, in addition, you know, I also invest, uh, I trade stocks. As I mentioned, I invest a little in cryptocurrencies. Obviously, I have a portfolio with some mutual funds, which is kind of one of the basics uh, of investing. I have a retirement account. So uh, as a hobby, you know, I like to follow uh, finance. I enjoy trading stocks, following currencies. Just you know, as a hobby, I find it interesting because everything you hear around the world is uh, reflected in these prices. So it's quite interesting. You know, a lot of people just follow the news to be informed, but when you invest, you can take that news and make, you know, different kinds of decisions based on what you think will happen. So in terms of the Iraqi dinar, uh, I'll outline kind of the red flags I see with this as an investment opportunity. Now, the way I understand how this is presented is that uh, the regime was recently formed there, and the idea is you'd be getting in kind of early, uh, and when the regime starts to stabilize more, the currency is going to rise, and you'll make a lot of money because you're getting it very cheap. You know, from the start, there's a lot of problems here. Um, first, you know, there's always the idea that many think, well, you want to buy something cheap because it will go up in value, but let's move investing aside you know if you buy the cheapest car uh, although you're not using it for investing oftentimes it has a greater chance of breaking down it doesn't have all the features cheap is not always good you know when you're investing in stocks you actually often want to get the ones that are rallying and moving up because they can move up and go more you know just look at the last five seven years in the stock market if you just sat there you would have lost a lot of money the stock market has just continued to rise. You know, you want to buy in on something that's going up and rising. Uh, so, Iraq doesn't have this. You know, um, it's a newly formed regime, and and so the the other premise that this will stabilize and somehow your money will uh, will double or triple is, I don't even say a reasonable bet. It's uh, you know the odds are are incredible because the norm is for countries not to function well. I mean. You can look at the history of Europe. It took many wars to get where Europe is today. The United States, how many uh, battles, how many people died in the Civil War? Uh, there was a Revolutionary War, obviously, in the beginning. I mean, it took a long time for democracy to establish. That's my point. Uh, Iraq, let's say in its form as we see it today, is, compared to other countries, an infant. So to expect it's immediately going to go to uh, the level of a stabilized nation, uh, is, in my view, unrealistic. And so I think this is why it's just not even a wise decision because this is even outside the realm of a gamble, is what I'll say. And the final point is currencies are kind of tricky as purely an investment. So let's look at some examples. You know, in general, currencies will go up if the interest rates are going up uh, because the general idea is if a currency has a high yield, then you want to put your money there because you're getting basically free money in the sense that you can keep your money in the bank and you'll get a, a return on that. So a country with a low interest rate yield doesn't uh, see much you know, rise in value of their currency compared to others. Now in Iraq, the idea is that you would actually get this money back from a bank, but the country is so unstable you can't even put it on this playing field. Uh, I wouldn't even put it there. And just because a currency goes up doesn't mean it's worth something when it's not a stable country. Uh, look, research Zimbabwe. It's a perfect example. Uh, they had, you know, massive hyperinflation to the point where, you know, you can look it up. I think now one U.S. dollar gets you something like a hundred thousand Zimbabwe. I mean, it's ridiculous. You can. I think for $5 you can buy a million dollar note. I mean, it it's, means nothing. 
uh, this Zimbabwe money. Uh, going back into history, in uh, the Weimar Republic in Germany, this is pre-World War II, uh, you know, they had a lot of debt to pay after World War I. They didn't have uh, basically a stabilized financial regime, so they just kept printing money, printing money, printing money. And that's the classic example of hyperinflation, where it was actually cheaper uh, to take your money in a wheelbarrow and put it into the fire instead of buying a log, because actually the, the, the log was worth more than this money. It was purely paper. So keep in mind that when it comes to currency, you know, you have a dollar in your hand. It really is paper. Uh, why is it that you can use it to buy things? Well, it's because we have faith in the U.S. economy, if it's a dollar, if it's a euro. You know, these are established regimes. But just because it's a piece of paper, the, the faith behind it really is the strength of the country you're talking about. So a British pound, an Australian dollar, all of, all of these people will respect because they know these are stable countries. But keep in mind, it's only paper. You know, when you think about it, it is a little weird if you really are to sit there and say, I have this piece of paper and people will give me things for it. But there's so much behind uh, a currency of an established country. And you don't have that in Iraq. And that is the, the biggest challenge you're going to find, having this as an investment. And so uh, it leads to, to my, my next point is, you know, if you have these Iraqi dinars, you can't do anything with them because no bank in the U.S. or any bank in Europe, I don't even know in the Middle East, I didn't look it up, but basically most of the global banks uh, are not going to take Iraqi dinar. So once you have it, you can't do anything with it. Now, you can't loan it out either. Who would take a loan in Iraqi dinar? Because if you have this uh, money, you, you can't spend it on anything. So it just kind of sits there. Um, so if you think about it, it doesn't really make so much financial sense to be holding on to this because you're kind of stuck with it. And, you know, where could you sell it? The only place I see it being sold is on eBay. So... And if you look, there's not a whole lot of, you know, there are some people who've done the research and want to buy, but it's mostly just people wanting to sell, sell, sell. Everyone is looking to sell. So now if you do want to sell the Iraqi dinar, look at all the people you're competing against. And chances are when they sold it to you, they put in some markup there. Uh, so, you know, if you want to try to sell it back, you may lose out on the transaction. Um, so you have this to consider. Uh, the other thing is just comparing the Iraqi dinar to other type of investments. So five years ago, if you invested in Bitcoin, uh, well, let's make it more recent for Bitcoin. Let's say you invested $1,000 in Bitcoin in the beginning of 2017, and you put the same amount in Iraqi dinar. You know, even with Bitcoin's drop this year, you would have had a really nice return. Not so much on the Iraqi dinar. It basically hasn't moved at all in value over the past four or five years. So to bring this to the next level, let's look at the stock market. You know, if you bought Iraqi dinar five years ago, uh, you'd basically be in the same place with your money. And it would be very hard even to, to get that back, as I've outlined. Now, had you put 10000 in the stock market five years ago, I mean, you would have at least doubled. I, I don't know the math right here, but it would have been a very nice return you would have made on your investment. So you need to also uh, consider and think about this when uh, you're making this investment, that what are you missing out on? Because uh, when you invest in, let's say, anything, there's an opportunity cost. So if I invest uh, in Microsoft stock, that means I can't invest in Apple. Now, if Microsoft does better than Apple, that was a wise decision. But if it didn't, then that wasn't the best one. So you have to really think, what am I getting for my money? What, am, I, am I able to collect anything off of it? You know, you can't loan it out. At least when you invest in a stock, you get a yield. So, you know, many think that the stock market is overinflated. I tend to agree with this, and it's now summer 2018. Uh, I think a good play uh, is to invest in some gold stocks that offer uh, a dividend. Because even if you don't get the timing right, you're at least collecting some kind of dividend every month, uh, or you know, depending on how they schedule, maybe every quarter. Uh, with the dinar, you don't get anything. You're just sitting on paper, essentially, uh, hoping for something that, as I've outlined, seems quite uh, unrealistic. Um, 
you know, and then the other thing is uh, when you're making a pure currency investment play, and I kind of borrow this uh, idea from Peter Schiff, who if you want to learn more about, uh, you know, just finance or hear a very kind of uh, libertarian minded uh, person on everything related to policy, you know, he's a big gold promoter. Um, and so what he mentions is if there is a big financial crash, you know, you're not investing in gold, which is what you know, he promotes uh, to make money. It's to protect your money, meaning if the stock market crashes, then if you have gold, you've hedged yourself out because normally gold, silver, precious metals, these go up in times of crisis. Uh, so it's a good idea just to not lose as much money. But with Iraqi dinar, it doesn't, it hasn't responded at all. It just sits there. So it's something else that you really need to, to consider and think about. Uh, and you know, the, 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 the final point I'll kind of say on this is you never really hear anyone talking about this. There's not many uh, professional invest. You know, I've never heard someone like Peter Schiff talk about Dinar uh, or Warren Buffer or any anyone like that. It, most of the websites that you go on who are promoting this kind of look like these, uh, you know, very quickly put together, you know, get rich quick things. You can only go on eBay. You can't even go to a pawn shop. Uh, all the signs to me uh, are big, you know, big red flags. So, you know, to summarize. It's a very high, high uh, chance that the regime won't be stable in the next few years. Uh, there's a chance the money could be inflated and not worth anything. Uh, it's very hard to get rid of it once you have it. You can really only sell on eBay. No banks or anything accept it. And there's a lot of better performing markets out there for, as of this video, 2018. So consider all these points before you make the investment, and I'll await any feedback you have.